So unit seven, uh, questions 23 to 26. So I'll give you a moment just to take a look at it and uh, think about it. Okay, so uh, for the first question, so this is another more fish question. Um, and uh, for those of you who have done your genetics review, and this would be important. Um, as I mentioned uh, from the outset, it's one of the three most important uh, biology subjects to actually review. And uh, genetics is one of them comes up often. And this is going to be a monohybrid class for those of you who know what that means, with one trait and two alleles. And it talks about uh, one a single gene locus, locus means the position of the gene uh, on the chromosome. And uh, though this is a monohybrid class, I just have to warn you, <laughs> um, dihybrid classes have managed to find their way on the game set, so it is something that we need to review. Um, it's in the book, but you can find it in any book uh, that reviews uh, basic biology. Okay, so um, in the first question, 23, in the purpose point, in the early offspring, F1, which is the first generation or the first filial generation of the class between uh, Japanese starry flounder. So the Japanese starry flounder is, uh, is LL, and we're going to cross that with. Uh, and it's uh, LL because in the hypothesis form, that is what is homozygous dominant, and the right eyed west coast starry form. So it's right eyed. Um, now the only chance that it could be right eyed is if it's LL. So it cannot be big L, small L, because it would be left eyed. So the only chance that it could be right eyed is if it's small L, small L. So um, now we'll uh, put this in, and, and yes, this is uh, recorded. So this is so I'm going to uh, put the cross big L there. Next, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to take that risk and do this freehand, and it's going to look strange, but at least it'll be faster. So L, big L, big L, and uh, small L, small L, and so now this is a Punnett square. So once we have placed uh, the different genes. Now we can just put in each box by looking at the top box and the box to the left as to what should be in that box. And there it is. So we have in each case big L and small L. So it means that because the big L is dominant and it means left eyed, it means that all of the offspring, so all possibilities for the offspring is going to be a big L, small L, which means left eye because it's dominant. But they are all carriers or so-called heterozygous. So they're all carriers of the um, of the, well, they're all carriers of the allele that could uh, uh, provide right eye, but they are all left eye. So um, the answer would be 23C would be left eye flounder only. Now 24, according to hypothesis 3, uh, many crosses between blah blah would result in offspring proportions 2. So again, uh, we do a Punnett square, and it is likely, you know, that you would do a Punnett square for the real exam. Um, and as I said, hopefully it will be monohybrid, like these ones are, um, but it is possible. You would get a uh, 
uh, dye hybrid class. So now this one is uh, L L prime by big L L prime. So um, let me put that in. So we have big L and L, L prime and the and we're crossing that with small l and l prime. Okay, so this is uh, hypothesis three. Now we just put in a box what what we see. Okay, so that's what we have there. And here we have l and l prime. Then we have big l and l prime. And then here we have two L primes. Now, it's just a matter of interpretation. So, first of all, the big L is dominant over everything. So, um, okay. So, big L is dominant over everything. So, here is the big L, okay? So this is, uh, you see that there are four different possibilities and 50% of them, which is two out of the uh, four, okay? So 50% of the possibilities is that we have um, big L, which is dominant uh, overall, and so that's uh, going to be left eye. So now we have to look at what these other things uh, are up to. Now, this one over here, which is 25%, um, because it's one quarter of the possibilities. Uh, this one over here, this one is the uh, recessive uh, option or possibility. And L prime, L prime. And this one um, could be, according, let's take a look at, uh, um, Hypothesis three, this one is homozygous neutral, meaning it has an equal chance of developing into left or right. So because this uh, has an equal chance, this 25% has an equal chance of developing into left or right, it means that we would expect that 12.5% would be left and 12.5% would be right. So from this here, we expect to see 12.5%. Of course, this is because it's a big population. There are many uh, crosses that were done. So overall, you would expect 12.5%. Uh, so that gives us a total of left at 62.5%. Uh, and just to underline, the one that is below here, this is going to be 25%, of course, um, that would be right because L is dominant over L prime. And that small letter L is dominant over L prime. So that 25% would be right. So the number that, are, that would be left would be 62.5%. And um, so the closest response to that would be antitrust C, so 24C. Okay, next 25. Okay, there we go. And so now we are looking at uh, hypothesis 2. In hypothesis 2, we only have LL and LR. Okay, so, and now we're going to be looking at a cross, uh, which would be Japanese a starry founder, and that is LL, we're told, and uh, a cross between that and West Coast founder, um, which is, which would have the two alleles L and R. Okay, so um,
Okay, so now in terms of the uh, genetics, I mean, we see that it's 50% LL and 50% LR in the offspring, but we need to interpret what this information means. And so um, to properly interpret the information, we look back at hypothesis two, and we note that LL does um, produce left eye, okay, so those two LLs will produce left eye, but LR have an equal chance of being either left eye or right eye. So um, the, LL, the LRs uh, are a 50-50 chance. These ones are 50-50. These ones are 100% LL. So these are 100% LL. The uh, LRs are 50-50 uh, between left and right. So in other words, we end up with a 75% chance of LL. So we have a 75% uh, chance of LL uh, to, uh, I should say, 75% chance of left eye and 25% chance of right eye. Why? Because the LLs are always going to be left, okay, but the LRs are 50-50. Half of them are left, half of them are right. So because of that, we get 75 to uh, percent to 25. So that means that it's 3 to 1 uh, would be the ratio. So 25, the answer would be A. And now 26. Okay, so now we're going to look at three different hypotheses. Okay, so um, if we look at hypothesis, hypothesis number one, which is in the laboratory, 50% right eye, 50% left eye. So if we have an equal chance of one or the other, then we are talking about LL crossed with LL. That is hypothesis one. Hypothesis two, looking at the same results, because it's a 50, uh, 50 chance of left or right eye, then we're talking about LR, and LR is formed by LL by cross with RR. Well, let's see if we can uh, also figure out something for uh, the last one. So for hypothesis three, so again, 50% of each. So we know we get 50% uh, of each if um, we have LL by LL, because that would give us And this is going to give us LR. And this will give us LL. And so it is possible that using any of these uh, three hypotheses uh, that you can end up with the uh, offspring that are 50% right-eyed and 50% left-eyed. Yes, so um, certainly if you have uh, the book that will send it before you do, these are the only sections that uh, you really need to review. You carry out access to the case system. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't say the only section you need to review. I should say these are the critical sections you need to review for uh, biology and genetics. And in, in the book, it's in section 15.1 and 15.3, but of course, uh, well, wherever, whatever you're doing to review, definitely you know, want to review genetics, so very important part of your biology. So that's uh, unit seven. We have two more units, so the answer for 26 is D, because all of the hypotheses can function uh, with um, with the 
constraint that they provided, which is 50% left and 50% right. All hypotheses are possible. 